What if you were known in your field as the best of something, but not necessarily a master of things? Should you keep going? Should you try to make yourself better? In this episode of Documentary First, we're going to talk to Jeff Kurtenacker and just tease out how taste and entertainment or other areas can help us develop our own sense of excellence and why that's important. So thank you so much for listening. Stick around and see what you think. Welcome back to Documentary First, an inside look at a documentary filmmaker's journey. I'm your host, Jason Rugg, and I'm joined as always by Christian Taylor. Hey there, Jason. Hey, happy to be here. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see Uh, you. And we're joined by a guest that we just had last week, but he's back again, uh, Jeff Kurtnacker. Hello! Good to see you guys. He's back. Happy to have you. How you been, Jeff? I've uh, been great. Busy. Is it still is it still hot in Arizona? Uh, nope. Now it's cooled down. But it's going to get hot. And so, <laughs> do you still have scorpions? Thoughts and prayers. Uh, I guess they don't really aren't around in the winter time when the weather gets colder. Hmm. I don't know if they hibernate or what exactly. I haven't asked them, but I think uh, they will start coming back uh, when the temperatures start increasing. But uh, I got my mallet ready. I'm going to kill a lot of them. <laughs> the scorp <Awesome>. slayer. <laughs> Well, uh, why don't you give us a little bio of Mr. Jeff Kurtnacker, Jason? Yeah. So um, our guest is Jeff Kurtnacker, a music composer for video games, television, radio, and film. He was the lead composer on the 2014 MMO Wildstar by Carbine Studios. Uh, Then he worked at Blizzard Entertainment as a senior composer. Uh, Fans of his podcast, of this podcast, might recognize him as the composer from The Girl Who Wore Freedom and Grueling Glory. Jeff is now audio lead and composer working at Deck Nine Games on the soon-to-be-released title The Expanse, a Telltale series. Mm, That sounds interesting. It's cool. Fans of the show, of The Expanse show on Amazon Prime, it was on Sci-Fi, or the books, I think will enjoy the game immensely. And Telltale was a big deal a while ago, and um, we are part of their comeback story. So Telltale's making a comeback, and our game is one of their first comeback game so um it's very exciting um so anyway we're not here to talk about that but i just want to let you know if you like the show or the expanse world um you'll love the game which for video game people telltale they did like that that walking dead game right that was and a the, huge hit for them yes. yeah that was a massive game that was everywhere when that came out yeah so um, similar they, style is still that narrative driven choose your own adventure kind of game your choices have consequences um we're doing that same thing which as an audio guy it's very fun to be part of that fabric because um you know i don't know it's just audio can play a huge role in storytelling which it doesn't always get to do in other video games. Um, it's all buried by explosions and people yelling. So um, <laughs> it's pretty cool. But it's interesting because that game, I, I, I it ties into what we're talking about today. Do you mind if I just roll into it? Because Yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, talk about what we're talking about today, Jeff. I, I've been, uh, working on this game has been a challenge for me, and it's really opened my eyes to something I haven't, I hadn't really thought about before, but I'm, I'm passionately thinking about now. Um, I've been... This idea that um, you develop a standard of excellence as a creative person and you you develop your taste of what you do well and what you can improve on and you're always striving to get better. Um, But how do you apply that to something that either you aren't very good at initially or you don't really have an interest or aren't very passionate about? Um, It'd be like a chef who cooks Italian food and someone goes, I'd love to hire you to cook Chinese food. And he goes... I mean, a chef, he probably can do it, but how does he apply his same level of excellence that he makes Italian food with that he's known for, and he brings that to Chinese food or any other cuisine? And um, this game has been a challenging because I've always been a composer who I love thematic material. I write, I love writing melodies. Um, and this game has been a lot of very ambient music. So how do I find the joy and the excellence and the passion of of producing ambient music when I haven't really done much of it. And it's not something that really makes me excited as a composer. And I started thinking about it as any creative discipline, an actor, a director. So um, this discussion of, of more and more young people I'm talking to want to um, want to have success, this idea of success, and they want to do big things. But there isn't a lot of discussion about just being good at what you're doing. And how are you good at what you're doing 
even when it's something you may not know how to do. In composery school, I think that's what they call it, composery <laughs> school, they, they, they told me, um, say yes to the gig and figure out how to do it later. And I thought, that's interesting advice. And I think to some extent it's true, but we don't ever really talk about what well, <laughs> I say yes to writing, you know, uh, an anime cartoon. Well, just cause I want the gig, but now what do I do? I either am going to climb this mountain and produce something that is high quality, or I'm going to fail miserably and never get hired again. And so there's this huge ga- chasm between saying, yes, I can do that because you want the gig but then following through and producing with excellence. And so I love this idea of, of the creativity and the creative process. And I thought we could all kind of talk about what do we do to develop our taste, to, you know, uh, get ourselves on projects that are in over our head and then claw our way to the top, but still maintaining a quality of excellence. So uh, it was a lot there, but that's kind of what's been swirling around my head. I think that's great stuff to think about because truthfully, we're doing this podcast for that exact reason, because I did jump in having absolutely no idea how to do a documentary. So I was that first approach. I'm going to just figure it out along the way. And that really is how I approached it. I got extremely blessed, fortunate, lucky, whatever you want to say, to be able to partner with people like you who are excellent at things. And we had a lot of fortunate breaks that allowed us to produce a product of excellence. But in the meantime, we wasted a lot of money, (laughs) time, made tons of mistakes, and there's a million things I would do over. And I would love for people not to make the same mistakes I did. So uh, in answer to your question, they just need to listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think we're trying to to answer a question that is maybe unanswerable. Some people are born with the ability to do many many things, and they they have an aptitude for, you know, we offline we had talked about someone like Taylor Swift who can do many many things, and she can cross genres and still be very popular. Um, or I, I brought up the idea of someone like Pauly Shore who kind of just got pigeonholed he did his one thing but he did it so well but when the time in the culture was over and that one thing had passed by he was left sort of with nothing and you know it's it's not maybe his fault that he didn't have the aptitude to cross over or maybe he wasn't given the chances or whatever the case is sometimes we don't have that control but what i find fascinating is so christian when you you say i'm going to make a documentary and i've never made one before at some point in the process, there's a barometer that says, I think this is a good idea. I think this is the way to tell the story. I think this is going to reach people. And I think what we don't talk about enough as creative people is how do we, how do we get that barometer to be accurate, right? Because I've done a lot of things where I think this is cool, but I also realize I don't know that anyone else is going to think it's cool. But then <laughs> I have to find the spot where I'm like, I think this is going to work in this project And it's a universal appeal sort of thing. Yeah. What do you think, Jason? Yeah, I think this, there's this thing I've I've had in my head pretty much since I was a little kid when I started making like animations and that sort of thing where it was like, there's a moment in every creative person's life that I think is really important to actually becoming a creative person who's successful. And that's realizing that what you've made completely sucks. (laughs) I totally (laughs) agree with this. Yes. It's the moment where you go, wow, I made this thing. I'm not just happy that I made this thing. I wish I made it better. And that's the difference between your, your taste and your skill. And so long as there's a gap between them, you can try to incrementally get better, right? You can try to make your thing better. You can try to make it excellent to actually reach your taste. And I think that that part of what you're hitting there, Jeff, is that you have this taste for, hmm, I'm working on, this thing, I want everything I do to be excellent, right? Because you, you, you do an excellent job. And so like, oh, you're working on this ambient music that doesn't necessarily rise to what you want it to be, right? It doesn't feel like this excellence that you're, that you're pursuing, but you can try and make it the best it can be. And I think that there's an interesting moment there. Cause I have, I have friends who call themselves creatives and they've never hit that. This sucks moment. They've Mm. never acknowledge that the thing they made isn't good enough. 
and they just keep making that thing at that level. And that's all it will ever be. And if you're not looking back at what you've done and going, how could I make that better? How could I make that thing I made a decade ago better? And you've learned a bunch since then. And actually, how can you grow that and learn from each thing you make? And I think one of the key parts of that um, is actually finishing each thing you work on. Now, this isn't necessarily about what, what Jeff's talking about with, with music here, but I think it's actually not getting halfway through and getting discouraged and going, oh, this isn't as good as I want it to be. It's actually finishing the thing and then looking at it as a whole and going, okay, this is the whole thing. What can I make better about this whole thing? Because if you just half finish a bunch of things because it's not up to your taste, you're never going to actually get the whole experience and never going to be able to uh, sufficiently raise your skill set to meet your taste. If that makes sense. I, yeah. I totally agree. And I love failure, I think, is the best teacher in the creative process. Yeah. Um, I, I've talked to a lot of young people who say, like, they don't say this specifically, but it feels like the tone is, I, I wish people would just recognize my genius. And yeah. rather than <laughs> uh, maybe realizing that you haven't risen to that level of you know, great greatness or excellence. Um, you just are doing something and it, it meets where your tastes are right now. So it's, you think it's excellent, but there's a huge gap there you're not aware of. Um, and I know Christian, we've talked about it many times. The, the things that you learned in, in writing and shooting and directing and editing the failures, the times that you put together something and it didn't work out, um, you know, those being the greatest teacher to go, I think this is going to work. It didn't work to be able to recognize and say, Hmm, my taste wants it up here at the top. And I'm only, my emotions are feeling it down here at a 30%. So how do I bridge that gap? I think that's fascinating. And I don't know, I don't really necessarily know how you, how you develop that or how you get to that point. I guess that's what I'm kind of curious about is how we, well, how, how you learn from those lessons. Yeah. And I mean, I'll say when you were talking, what one thing I was thinking about, you asked, how do you develop something that you're not good at, that you want to or have to be good at? And as I look back at my experience with the girl who wore freedom, the first place that I encountered that was when I had a script that I read or when we put together was terrible. I didn't like it. And so Bill Ebel said to me, Christian, if you're going to want this done and you want it the way you envision it, you need to write it. And I was really mad. I didn't want to write it. I didn't think I was a good writer. And so I, I just had to sit down and make myself do something that was really hard that I didn't like to do and that I didn't know how to do. And what I did then is went and studied, studied like crazy. I found documentaries that I liked that had the same feel or the same way of telling the story that I enjoyed. I watched a bun bunch of them. I watched them over and over and over again. And one of the ones that I really latched onto was Generation Wealth. And we talked about this a long time ago where, you know, it was a female point of view. She was writing it. There was a specific way that she told the story. And I actually used that as a template where I was like, okay, I'm going to start and use this kind of as a guideline for myself. And I have found, that's why I just obsess with documentaries. I watch them all the time because I really want to be, I want to up my game and be a better documentarian, right? So I have to watch and compare and learn. So um, what did you think when you first wrote the script? You didn't want to do it. You write the script. Did you go, well, oh, it's pretty good. Or were you like, I don't know if this is good or not. I have no, and I need yeah, I, I thought I had no idea if it was any good. I also had to voice it, which I was like, I thought it was just a temp track and I thought I sucked. Now, what did change things for me is I then had to show it to people. I then had to show it with hardly any review at all. It was two hours long in Normandy to an educated audience and see what they felt. And that was a huge wake up call. I learned a lot in presenting that to to an audience. And then for the next year, I took it all over the United States. I mean, hundreds of times I showed the film and took constructive feedback. And that was super hard. What do you do with that when people tell you, eh, this isn't so good? Do you fold it up? Do you try to tweak it? You know, right. there was always emotion involved. And I don't know how many times I said, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. 
and I wanted to throw it in the trash because that creative process is so messy. And like Jason says, you actually have to push through that and finish. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you'd just gotten that first round of feedback and said, oh, no, I'm done. Like yeah. you wouldn't have the movie <laughs> right. and you wouldn't have gotten any better. And yeah. you would still be going, I could have been a filmmaker, but you are a filmmaker because yeah. you finished it. Yeah. yeah you'd be sitting yeah. going, I wish I was a filmmaker. I wish people would recognize my genius, you know, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're in that stage. But I think perseverance is the greatest catalyst in this whole process of being able to go, even if you're not sure if this is right or wrong, like Jason said, or if good or bad, I'm going to finish it. And I've been in so many situations where I think a piece of music sounds pretty good. And then someone walks in the room, I go, Hey, listen to this. And as soon as I hit play, I'm like, Oh, this is awful. Wait, <laughs> you're, you're, you're like hearing it through someone else's ears in a way. And it's, it's a mind blowing experience, but if you don't finish it and get it out there, you'll never have those, that emotional process of trying to be better. Yeah. It's a great thing to ask ourselves and to ponder Jeff. I mean, you know, we're, we're going to wrap up quickly, but do you have anything we haven't talked about here that you've come to like any things that you've put into place? I mean, I remember the first time you and I were working through a piece of music and I kept saying, Oh, I don't know about this. And I don't know about that. And you're like, I don't think I'm the composer for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I said that. (laughs) Yeah, you did. And we did push through that and we worked on, but so clearly over time you've had to wrestle with this and what have you learned? Yeah. I think, you know, going back to the first, uh, when I was talking about this particular video game I'm on and someone says, I need you to make this one note as interesting as possible. Like that is really, (laughs) it was a struggle for me. And so, um, what I've learned is that there, I think for me, at least in my life, there's two, there's two sides to this coin. And one side is the, this developing, um, taste or developing your standard of excellence side? What am I doing in the off season or in my downtime that is um, enriching my creative spirit that allows me to filter my work through it and go, this is actually pretty good or this isn't, this could be better. So what are those things I'm doing um, to enrich that? And then the other side of it is then applying that filter to my work and, and being just always being comparing and asking myself, like, do I believe that this is good and appropriate and fits the scene? You know, I, I watch back a lot of cinematics or even, you know, the girl who are freedom and just go, do I believe that this music supports what's happening on screen? And I don't think you can answer that question truthfully until you've done the off season work, right? Until you've put in the building up your barometer and building up your creative spirit and going like, otherwise you're going to be like, of course I believe it. I wrote it. It's awesome. And yeah. I think you have to be able to get to a point where you're honest with yourself, but your taste is saying like, mm, I think you could do better. Or actually this is pretty good because another challenge is knowing when to be done <laughs> and knowing when to say, ah, I think this is going to work and I'm going to walk away. Um, so that's kind of yeah. been my experience is the off season and then, you know, the regular season. Oh, that's great stuff. I remember Bill Evil saying the edit isn't over until they rip it out of your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and no, uh, no movie is ever finished. It just escapes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's kind of true with that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh man, that's great stuff. Uh, I just think it's, Tough to remember, but it's just like an athlete, right? Athletes have to, in the off season, they have to study different approaches to things, reinvent their golf swing, you know, exercise, figure out what's happening in the game and figure yeah. out how you have to adapt to that. And I think it's the same here. No matter what you're, what you're doing, acting, directing, producing, writing, composing, it's all the same thing. You have to watch what's happening in the marketplace. You have to understand where trends are going. You have to practice those disciplines. You have to try them out before other people. Um, And you have to step away and then come back to them because you hear them differently, just just like you said. Um, So there are specific skills I think you can put into place if you're willing to take that risk because part of it also is being vulnerable and being okay with that. And as creatives, we are always vulnerable, but it's very difficult to be okay with that and open and not let it crush our soul. 
Yeah, absolutely. Try not to take everything personally. And I, real quick, I think if I were to leave it on anything, I would say uh, if you're a young person or just sort of starting out in, in a creative endeavor, you may be idolizing or chasing after. I want to be like Quentin Tarantino, man. That's my dude. I want to be just like him. Well, we have a Quentin Tarantino. What we really need is, is a you, whatever you're doing. And so it's okay to be influenced by people. I'm influenced by all kinds of composers, but I'm not trying to be that person. And so the, the biggest gift you can give yourself is realizing how you can be influenced by the people you idolize, but still bringing your unique background, heartbreaks, dreams, aspirations, all the things that you've lived in your life and the experiences, bringing that to your work um, and not letting that be crushed because you're just trying to write in the style of or act in the style of or direct in the style of. So um, I think you got to find your what makes you tick? What what is in the what's in the engine room of the Titanic? And if you don't find that, I think you're going to be struggling to find the authenticity that the creative world really needs. So that's that's what I always tell young people, not as poetically as I just said it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> that's yeah. great stuff, Jeff. Completely great. Thank you for challenging us to dig a little deeper uh, and think about uh, these deep thoughts uh, as we try to, you know, improve ourselves. If you're listening to this today, it is because either you really enjoy filmmaking or the creative process and you're, you're interested uh, or you really do want to get better at what you're doing. So we hope this was uh, educational and informative for you. Jeff, it is always great to have you with us. We do hope you'll come back, challenge us a little bit more. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, all right. With the end of that, it's time to move into DocuView Deja Vu. DocuView Deja Vu. Dun, dun, dun. What are we talking about today? I could have did it live again had I just prepared myself. <laughs> ah, I hate myself. Please, strive for excellence for the next <laughs> uh, I'm worthless. <laughs> Who's starting this one off? All right. I can go. Okay, Jason's going. Yeah, I could go. Um, mine's a really short one. Um, there's a series on um, HBO right now called The Last of Us. We talked about Chernobyl last week with uh, with Jeff for the last time we had an episode. Um, this is from the same one of the same writers of Chernobyl, um, and it is a video game adaptation. And so it's really fascinating because you can actually look at the video game, and you can look at the show, and you can see what they're doing differently. But they've released a companion podcast. Um, it's the Last of Us HBO official um, podcast where they talk with the guy who directed and wrote the video game and the guy who is writing the the series along with him. And they talk about why they're doing things differently for the show and based off of the medium. So mm. there's a whole episode, season episode three, where they're like, we couldn't tell this story in a video game. It's just, it's an action video game. There's a lot of, you know, shooting, that sort of thing. This one episode has like no action whatsoever in it, but we, we wanted to tell this story. And so we went out of our way to tell this story, which we could do on a TV show, but we couldn't do in a video game. And it's just so interesting to hear them break down why and the choices they made and how they did it. And yeah, absolutely worth it. If you love creativity and particularly if you love adaptations of things, you can actually go look at both side by side and then listen to this podcast and hear why they made it different. Yeah. That's super cool. It's I very, love I it. You bring documentary up. tangential things to documentary. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's that I don't, I don't watch that many documentaries. And so it's like, <laughs> Doc this, is, this is the thing I'm, I've been really excited for recently. So that's great. All right, Jeff, you're up. Uh, so I saw this a while ago. I don't think I've ever talked about it in my, in my visits to the show. Um, but maybe I have, I apologize, but it's called Framing John DeLorean. And um, I think I saw it on Hulu, but I think now it's migrated over to Netflix, but I could be wrong. Um, it is, I, I love the story of the DeLorean car and the how it's, you know, because I was a huge Back to the Future fan, which sparked, uh, you know, my love for DeLoreans. And so I had always heard about him and the drugs and all this stuff of uh, how he lost this empire and he was, you know, uh, arrested by the FBI for all this stuff. And so there's this documentary out um, that goes through his rise to making his own company and then um, making his car and, and needing funding and how that all happened. And it introduces some interesting uh, evidence or viewpoints at least about, you know, was he set up? Was he framed um, in sort of a way where, 
he wasn't seeking drug money or doing anything illegal. He was just sort of like he didn't know that that's what the discussion was going to be. And then he showed up and then they got him. It, w- it was interesting. Uh, but more than anything, I thought it was interesting to see how he rose to fame. We talk about taste. He was the one that said, you know, th- this is what the young kids in America want. They want a, this kind of car, a muscle car, like a Mustang. And they were like, I don't think so. And then he, it was like the biggest selling car ever. And so he was someone who could see and had his pulse on the trends of what car buying was and where it could go. And I thought it was fascinating. So um, I loved it. I loved hearing about it. And I don't have any answers whether he's innocent or guilty, but I thought it was cool. <laughs> and how was the music, Jason? Jeff? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. That's, I guess it was good. I don't <laughs> know right. that a whole lot of those kind of documentaries, I think they, I don't know, they have great, great music, but some of them Well, do. some do actually, because the one I'm going to talk about is called American Factory. Uh, that one does have great music. Yeah, <laughs> it does have great music. In fact, it was nominated uh, for the International Sound and Music Festival the same year we were for the it girl won who with were, us. It, it won with us. That's right. Yeah. Chad Cannon is a composer, and he uh, I loved that uh, documentary and the score. Yeah, it's a great documentary. So American Factory is a 2019 American documentary film uh, directed by Stephen Bogner uh, and Julie Reichert. Uh, it is a Chinese company that uh, wants to make uh, their stuff here in the United States. And so they move into Ohio, into a like abandoned Detroit, I think, or Ford Motor. I don't remember what company it was, but they moved into that factory. And it's the whole story. And what's interesting to me about this, I mean, it's a great story. The score is fantastic, but it is the storytelling and the style that I thought was really uh, unique. And they did this fly on the wall sort of filmmaking approach. And it's where like the, there's no dialogue that's external to the subjects of the film. It's the sounds of the factory, the dialogue of the workers is prioritized. And they did that by using lav mics. Um, and, you know, when they were going to record them speaking, they did it in their homes or somewhere else outside, um, you know, outside that factory. So the way that they created the American factory to me was, was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. I liked it. That was a good one. The all funny right. thing is, real quick about that, is that when when I saw that we were all nominated in that category, uh, I remember Jenna, my wife, and I watched American Factory. It was on Netflix at the time. It maybe still is, but um, we watched it, and I, I was listening to the score specifically because I knew we were all nominated together, and I thought, well, obviously, I'm not going to win. I mean, that's, that score, <laughs> score sounds good. <laughs> and so when they decided that we were both worthy, I felt like, wow. That's amazing. That was that meant a lot to me that they took that score and our score and put it on the same level. That was that to me was amazing. Well, I believe our score does belong on that level. I think you did an amazing job, and I'm ready for you to do our next one. Wow, <laughs> so, I appreciate it, and I'm ready too. Thinking about that. All right, Jason, take us out. Well, I guess I yeah. need to do some stuff first, don't Actually, I? Actually, I'm not, I'm not allowed to take us out yet. You have to, <laughs> <laughs> you have to wrap things up. Yeah, you know. So I did. You know, we are trying to do things a little bit differently here. I don't know if you've noticed. We're trying to shorten it. We are trying to uh, like jump right into the subject and maybe do a little update at the end. So we're going to do that update now. Basically, last week we um, continued working on the logline and the synopsis. We are so so close. I hope uh, tomorrow we're going to finalize that so that we can start working on our pitch packet so we can make the pitch to investors. That's the plan. We are still, yeah. Christian, is that for a new movie, a new series? What, what? Thank you. That is for Carenton, uh, this new documentary that we're doing. We still really don't have a title. So it's called right now, Carenton Unlocking the Road to Liberty, but we don't really like that. It's too long. (laughs) It needs to be shorter. We'd like it to have a better idea of, um, you know, what it will be about without, you know, like, I don't know, giving it away. Like, I love the documentary that's nominated this year called Fire of Love. It does give you an idea. It's definitely about a volcano that's erupted and two people that are in love and the things they learn along the journey. So uh, we are trying to find a title that will have that same kind of shortness. And they missed an opportunity to call it I Lava You, but yeah. (laughs) They did, didn't they? (laughs) 
<laughs> Pretty good, Jeff. Uh, so, so anyway, we'd been working on that. The other thing I was supposed to have an Imagine Entertainment meeting this week, it got pushed to next week on uh, the 17th. I'm looking forward to that, trying to put together my little uh, pitch of, you know, why they should work with us. And uh, we've also been, you know, talking about how to, what other products we can make, you know, in the interim to try to put out more content, raise our supporters, and also hopefully raise our donations. So right now we're working on one minute, one soldier, one story. And that's where we identify a soldier. We tell their story in a minute. We're going to put it on, you know, YouTube story and Instagram reels and things like that. I just want to give a shout out to Marcio Barrera, who is in um, France making our reels for us. I don't know if you guys have seen those, but they're pretty cool. And I want to ask you guys, please, to follow us on our social media pages. Subscribe to us on Substack. You know, subscribe to our newsletter. And if you can, support us on Patreon. Even if it's a dollar, five dollars, you will then be on the inside track to helping us build this uh, company as well as our next film. Uh, And then, you know, you'll be along at the beginning of the journey. It's an amazing ride, don't you think, Jeff? I think so. I mean, I got in on the ground floor of the Girl Who Are Freedom driving four hours for a, a steak dinner. And, uh, <laughs> True. you know, it was it was great. It was worth it, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. Um, before we go, um, if you're listening to this and you enjoyed our conversation about excellence and pursuing um, create, creative things, share this with someone who you think could could use this as a little bit of inspiration for pursuing excellence. If you know someone who's, who's trying to figure that out too, um, be sure to send it their way. Um, and so with that, I, I guess we're finally going to wrap up. Um, thank you all for listening to Documentary First, where we believe everyone has a story to tell and you can be the one to tell it. Yes, you can. Bye, everybody. <laughs>